Hello and welcome to another pregnancy yoga session. Thank you for joining me again. Thank you for all the lovely feedback um, I've been getting. It's, it's really keeping me going um, to know that this is of use um, to a few people out there. So um, I've got Holly's story to, to start us off with um, today. So thank you so much, Holly, for taking the time um, when you've just had a baby. To, to send in your story. Um, we learn so much um, from your birth stories um, and everyone you know, is individual. I think that's probably the biggest thing um, that we talk about in the class really when we read the stories and we look through the books of past people's stories that I have in class is really noticing how you know, there's, there's no two the same. So here's Holly's. I gave birth to my baby girl 12 days over her due date. It wasn't quite the positive birth I was hoping to share, but it's positive in the sense that we ever have a healthy girl. And this is my story below. It was an interesting experience. Thursday morning, the day before I was booked in for an induction, my contraction started. I began tracking my contractions from around 3 p.m using the Freya app and used the many relaxation tools learnt in yoga and from my online hypnobirthing course. By 11 p.m. we decided to ring the MLU, so that's the midwife-led unit, as my contractions were strong and regular. By the time we arrived, my contractions had pretty much stopped. Now that's, as we've talked about before, that's certainly not unusual. Um, just the whole process of getting your bag together, getting into the car, uh, maybe going to the bright lights, etc. Having to, to literally use the front of your brain um, shuts down that primitive uh, part of the brain that leads us through um, our labour. Uh, so the body just naturally, you know, it's the same as fight or flight, it sort of naturally stops. So, th so that's not unusual. Um, I was examined and was found to be one centimetre dilated. So that can be, yeah, that can just make you feel awful when you get to hospital and uh, you think you think you're well into it, and then someone gives you a measurement, a number. Um, I was sent home and told to go to the labour ward in the morning, where I was booked in for the induction. 8 a.m. the next morning, I was induced with a hormone pessary to help stimulate my uterus. So the hormone pessary that they give um, is um, a hormone, a man-made hormone called syntocin. Our body naturally um, gives us oxytocin. Uh, and this is just the, the man-made form that, you know, in a lot of cases works really well to just get things going. So she had um, a, a pessary and uh, she was told that some people can occasionally rat badly and the uterus will be overstimulated. I happen to be one of these people, she writes. Within an hour or two, I was uh, literally having a constant contraction. I couldn't bear the constant pain. I tried many different relaxation techniques, bouncing on a birth ball, getting into a bath and eventually having gas and air, but none of this helped deal with the constant pain and I lost the will when I was examined and told I was still only one centimetre dilated at about 2 p.m. I became very tearful and demanded a C-section as I couldn't take any more. They talked me out of a C-section but suggested an epidural which I accepted. I literally cannot remember being transferred to another room. I was like a crazed animal at this point. Now, you know, hopefully it's not like that for too many ladies, um, but there are no medals for not having any help. So she totally did the right thing, having an epidural, you know, if you're feeling so out of control and you really just need that to, to help bring you back on path. So finally they got the epidural working um, and then it was a different story. I was able to rest up and become me again. So literally having that space, that time to, to gather herself. Literally then it was just um, a relax and chill situation while my body took over birthing. And you can hear that um, in her writing there, her body took over birthing. And that's what we really want to be happening. You know, our body is doing it, our body's naturally doing it. Um, and, but sometimes we need a little bit of man-made help so that we can relax into it um, 
and, and allow that process to happen. I was contracting but had no feelings, so my baby literally made her own way down my birth canal. At 7.15 p.m. I was fully dilated. I was told that in an hour I, I could start pushing um, and just to rest up until then. It was all so calm and surreal. My midwife was lovely and kept the room calm and dimmed the lights. During this time, my husband and I both had a nap. <laughs> Finally, it was time to push. Sadly, it was handover time for my midwife and we had to say our goodbyes and in came a new midwife. Things got a bit hectic again. The midwife noticed I had a temperature and my heart rate was increasing. They were trying to put all these different drips on me, but none of the machines uh, seemed to work. And so they just wasted time. By this point, Bubba was getting stressed too and her heart rate went up. There then was a mad rush for me to get her out. They pressed the emergency button and a rush of people came in, but finally she was born. She was then rushed straight off for observation, something to do with temperature, heart rates, and the way her shoulder had been delivered. They brought her back after 10 minutes and she was fine. Then we had a chance to have skin to skin and have a go at feeding. They wanted to keep her in for observations and so Maeve and I stayed in the labour ward, but my husband Joe couldn't stay because they were reducing um, the number of people due to the virus. So it was just me and her um, at about four hours old, a little nerve wracking. But we made it through and was actually a lovely bonding experience for Maeve and I. All checks came back clear, so we were able to go home the next day. It's been tw 12 days now and it's been amazing. She is a dream and we couldn't imagine life without her. We are happily living in our bubble of baby bliss. The main thing is that although we didn't, it didn't go um, as I'd originally wanted, a nice water birth, <laughs> with the help of the most calm and caring midwife, I decided to give um, an epidural go. It was the best thing ever. Honestly, from that moment on, it was calm and surreal and a really lovely experience. Yes, the end was tricky, but all ended well. Hopefully it won't be too long until we're attending your postnatal yoga. Love to all the ladies, Holly. So fabulous story. Thank you so much, Holly. Um, and please keep all your stories, all your updates um, coming in because it's lovely to be able to, to pass that on. And as I say, we certainly learn a lot from that. Um, yeah, risk of repeating myself. The biggest thing I get from that is that, yeah, there are no gold medals for not having any help at all. And sometimes, you know, whether it's the gas and air or the epidural, you know, you just need something to gather your strength again um, to, to help you uh, to relax and stay calm and allow your body to start to birth your baby, as, as Holly said there. So wishing them all the best. And um, yeah, I've got Sabrina's story, but I'm going to save that till next week. OK, keep you hanging on. So um, we've got a couple of births coming up next, uh, just looking at the register. I mean, maybe they've had their babies. It'll be lovely to hear from you. We've got Nicola, who's due on the 28th of April and just before hers on the 21st of April, um, we've got Natalie. So Natalie and Nicola, please, um, you know, have wonderful births. Tell us all about them, every detail. Um, yeah, really, really want to keep updated with what's happening with you. Um, Whitstable um, Positive Birth Movement. So Positive Birth Movement is a nationwide, um, uh, no, sorry, I've got some words there, is a, is a nationwide um, organisation. Um, so you can look up that on uh, Facebook and you can find one that's um, near you if you're you're not in my area. If you're in Whitstable, there's um, a fantastic discussion group. So there's loads of information on there, as I'm sure there is um, on the Nationwide uh, website, telling you all things, um, you know, about the uh, situation in your area. 
um, with relationship to the virus, um, you know, partners being at births, um, relatives. I, I know that they're, um, well, as far as I know, um, from listening to the radio yesterday, um, partners are still able to come into the birth room. You're just encouraged to have one partner, um, maybe, than, than you may have two sometimes. Um, so just, you know, your birth partner, no visitors, but they are encouraging you to take uh, laptops, devices, etc. in so that you can, um, you know, share the moments uh, with your friends and family. Um, but it does, um, it varies a lot in, in what location you're living, what area you're living in. So it is really worth checking up, uh, you know, with your, with your local uh, midwife. And um, yeah, the Whitstable Birth Group is Positive Birth Meeting Group is aiming, I say aiming because <laughs> it's all to do with technology, um, we're aiming to still have our meeting on the 29th of April. So Wednesdays, last Wednesday of the month is when we normally uh, meet up in Whitstable at the Umbrella Centre. Um, it's always a fabulous meeting, lots of pregnant ladies there, lots of mums who've just had their babies um, and Roz who um, orchestrates it all, who is a doula, uh, myself and Hannah and, and other people that just work in that field. And um, we're hoping to do it on Zoom um, next week. So you may be watching this video in the future and obviously it doesn't make any sense then. Uh, it's not relative. But if you are around on uh, Wednesday the 29th of April, 7 p.m. should be a live Zoom meeting and it will be lovely to have you join us. Just check those details there on the Positive Birth Movement website. They'll be putting up. Um, all the information of how to get onto it, etc. Okay, almost enough talking. Um, our, our letter this week was N, uh, N for noise, so we're going to be doing a little bit noise making um, along with our movements today, along with our yoga. Also, I added um, new, new, because these are really new, um, unprecedented times that we're in. So making sure that you're up to date with all the relevant information, as I've said, for your area. Your midwife should be just giving that to you anyway. I'm sure they're doing a fantastic job to keep you updated, um, to answer your questions and your worries, etc. Um, new also, new baby. I think it's a really interesting time for bringing your baby home and not having visitors. So visitors, um, we quite often discuss this in class, don't we? You know, there's all, and there's always a, a variety of opinions. You know, some ladies want everyone to visit. Um, other ladies, often the second time mums say, oh no, I'm just going to put a note up this time and, uh, and ask people to keep away for the first week because it's such a precious time. Um, obviously at the moment, we don't have a lot of choice in that. Um, but I'd love to hear, actually, I'd love to hear, you know, how you're finding that special time. Um, although it's forced upon you and you might be thinking, oh, I desperately want grandpa and grandma to come round and see the baby. Actually, just to have your baby all to yourself, you know, all to, to you and your partner's self for a number of weeks is a really, really special thing, isn't it? And of course, we've got social media, so, you know, you can share your pictures and things. Um, but yeah, maybe just having that little bit of distance um, is going to work well for new mums. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting when we all get back together to, to hear about that. Certainly in the postnatal um, yoga, I sure, I'm sure I'll be hearing a lot of stories um, yeah, about isolation um, and babies and, and how that's worked for you. Okay, so um, getting yourself ready, uh, you might need a, a blanket, uh, maybe a chair, a little bit of wall space today would be good. So just gathering your bits and pieces together and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so we're starting today um, with a little bit of balancing, just coming up on the toes. So it may be a good idea to either have a little bit of wall near you or back of a chair, etc. And starting first of all in Tadasana, so just rolling those shoulders back and down, 
Lifting the sternum, little tuck under of the tailbone, just adjusting through the body. So it can help to just close the eyes or soften the gaze so you can really take that focus inwards. So maybe lifting and separating the toes, fanning them out. Just becoming aware as you lay them back down on the floor, both the toes, the balls of the feet and the heels and your weight just maybe rocking back slightly back and forth from toes to heels so you find your center of gravity your point of balance maybe noticing whether your baby's awake or asleep i really miss hearing that in the class <laughs> Saying hello to them now for me if they are awake and having a little wriggle around. <laughs> Might upset your balance a little bit if they are. <clears throat> and then taking a couple of nice big deep breaths there. As you inhale, feel the body just maybe lifting and opening a little bit as you fill with that breath. And as you exhale, Okay, just drawing in and lowering, everything settling as you exhale. And slowly just opening the eyes. Again, just keeping the gaze soft. It really helps with balances if you fix your, your gaze on something that's not moving, maybe just ahead of you down towards the floor. And then Maybe a hand onto your support or hands onto the hips. We're going to inhale and just slowly come up onto the toes. Exhale, coming down. So just following your breath, inhaling as you rise, exhaling as you come back down. So don't rush the movements or the breath. Once more. Just resting with the soles of the feet on the floor when you finish that exhale. So you can repeat that if that's what's good for you today. Um, otherwise, we can take it a little bit further by just dropping into, not a full squat, so we don't need the legs really wide, we're still just keeping the feet underneath the hips, but we're just going to bend the knees a little bit as we exhale. So, if I go side on, you can see me a little bit better, so maybe you're going to use that support of your chair. We're going to inhale and come up on the toes. And as you exhale, we're keeping the heels off the floor and just bending the knees slightly. So I'm not going all the way down, just a little bit. Inhale to come up and exhale, heels to the floor, okay? So a little bit of space between the feet, just a sort of generous hip distance apart, lifting and spreading those toes. And then inhale, come up on the balls of the feet. Exhale, bending the knees, heels are still up. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, heels down. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, we're bending the knees. Try and keep the body straight as you do a little dip down. Inhale, pushing up, we're still on the balls of the feet. Exhale, heels coming down, twice more. Exhale, down. Inhale. just going to come up onto one foot so whichever way we're just going to do a little roll out 
into those ankles one way and then the other and the same on the other foot okay so you can possibly move your chair to one side for a moment and we're going to come to sitting so if you do have um, a yoga block or a brick or a firm pillow something to just raise the bottom behind you just makes it a little more comfortable for sitting tall so we're going to lift the flesh of the buttocks away behind as we come down to sitting now if you're on a hard floor like myself we're taking the legs apart so the heels the back of the heels are on the floor and we want to soften that contact a little bit so as you can see i just pushed my mat forward a little bit so i've got a bit of mat underneath uh, the back of the heel there so i'm right on the edge of my support right on the edge of that block tailbone ticking away behind a little bit you might be able to see in the mirror there um, and that's helping me to sit a little bit taller i'm not rounding through the back I'm able to sit tall. So just sitting comfortable for a moment. So you can leave the legs like so. Um, if that's really strong on your hamstrings, just coming into cross-legged for a moment. Because I just want to talk to you for a moment about the breath um, and about the noise making. So um, when we do this in class, um, it's always Quite an entertaining class because we're not all comfortable with, with making noises um, and I think when people come along they worry we're going to be making some sort of animal noises or something. Um, I'm certainly not teaching you how to moo like a cow. Um, the best way for me to say it really um, is to think of the, the noise making just as an extension of your breath, okay? So I, as I say, can't teach you a particular noise that you're going to make uh, in your labour because nobody knows that. No one knows that. You don't know that until you're there. You might even be one of those rare people that don't make a noise. Um, but it is very natural to make some noises because noise helps. Noise helps to sort of connect you deeper down. Um, <clears throat> and as I say, it's, it's kind of a natural extension of the breath. So you might notice uh, that I have quite a noisy breath when I breathe from my yoga because I'm not breathing all kind of in the back of the nose. The, um, it's a, a breath we call ujjayi breath in yoga where you're breathing in the back of the throat and it warms the breath. It helps you um, have a longer, smoother breath um, and it, it makes that little noise in a way that helps you to connect with your breath so that when you're doing your posture work, you become it, well, it becomes almost like a meditation, that noise of yourself breathing. If you've ever been snorkeling um, and you, or diving and you can really hear your breath, can't you, underwater? In fact, when you have a bath, um, if you're still able to kind of lean back and, and put your ears under and you can hear that noise of yourself breathing, it's very meditative. And if you think about it, that's what your baby is hearing, isn't it? Um, in your womb, underwater in your womb everything all the sound is amplified all the sounds of your body so the sound of your heart and the sound of your breath um, are really relaxing and soothing to your baby um, and that's why they want to be held so close when they're little isn't it they still want to connect with that sound of of your heartbeats um, and your breath and of course they you know there comes a stage when they are in the womb, recognising your voice, recognising the voice of your partner um, and maybe other siblings. And of course, it's not the voice itself, but it, it's the tone. Um, and, and music can play a huge part in that as well. So if there's particular music you listen to and feel really relaxed to during your pregnancy, um, that the baby can identify with that afterwards as well. Um, there's a whole whole subject there there's there's lullabies there's singing to your baby isn't there it's all about that connection um, with sound so making sounds during your birth <coughs> can really help you um, connect on a much deeper level to kind of 
to take that power, if you like, a lot deeper down. Um, and, and sound can continue to be something both post uh, um, and prenatally that really helps you to connect with your baby as well. So making um, noises, and as I say, your baby doesn't know whether you're, you know, you're singing, whether it's a lullaby, whether it's a rock song, um, or you're just making some noises like we're going to in a moment. But if they connect that with you being very relaxed and you do the same once your baby's born, um, there's lots of um, evidence there that the baby recognises that and uh, feels, feels soothed and relaxed too. So I'm sure you, you can look up some uh, more information on that. I'm sure there's a, there's a lot out there. Um, but for today, we're, we're thinking of how we might make those noises in labour. So really the last thing you want to be doing in labour is making really, really high pitch noise that is just going to give you a very sore throat and possibly a headache uh, and by the end of it we want to be taking that sound much deeper so when I make a I can feel that sort of reverberating um, you know through myself if you do it and you've got all that wonderful ambiotic fluid, I'm sure that's, you know, that's even bigger, you know, even more of a sort of a reverb through the body. So if we think of it in terms of, of, a, of breathing and making that sound just linked in with the breath, it's a fantastic way for your midwife, your partner and yourself to be aware of, um, be aware of how you're feeling, how you're dealing with things. So we know that um, you know the breath tells us a lot about how someone's feeling. If someone is talking to you and they're, oh, oh no, oh, ha, ah, ah, ha, the breath is all up here, and you can tell they're panicking, and they might be having a bit of a you know panic attack, and it's oh, it's all just oh, up here and not very good. If someone is just talking quite slowly, the breath. slow and long and even the kind of breathing that we are working towards in class it's much softer isn't it it's much more relaxed so by listening to your breath and if you're making noises with your breath um, it's a fantastic indicator as I say for the midwife and your partner for people around you to know maybe how you're coping or indeed what stage of labor you're in so you're not actually probably going to be thinking, oh, I'm going to make a sound now when you're in labour, but hopefully uh, by maybe just doing a little bit of practice with me today and, and then um, you know, by yourself at home or with your partner, you can just maybe get in tune. So if it does happen that you find yourself making these uh, noises, you can just really keep it in your mind to not do the sore throat noises, but do the deeper noises. And I'm sure it will come quite naturally. If it's going to happen, it's going to come quite naturally, okay? But like all these things, it's quite good to warn your partner because they might have never heard you making some, some strange deep noises before. Um, so it's good to make them, um, you know, realise that that is good. It's a good thing, all right? So enough chatting. Let's do a little bit of uh, stretching and noise making. So if you take your legs out wide but comfortable, as I am, and if you are tight in those hamstrings and you feel that your knees need to be up here, then do use an extra cushion or rolled up towel or something just to give you that support, okay, so that you can relax. We don't want quivering legs. So we're going to take the arms out in front of us. We're going to relax those shoulders. And first of all, without noise, just with the breath, we're going to make our circling movement. So we're going to take our hands forward and around. Doesn't matter which way you go, just remembering whether you're going clockwise or anti-clockwise. And I just want you to tune in to that breath. So we're inhaling. sweeping exhale and then 
this time as I exhale, I'm just going to go So soft lips and I'm just letting out a sound and it doesn't matter what that sound is. making a noise, <laughs> don't know what note that is, uh, but just relax lips, um, quite a tingling feeling on my lips as I was doing that, and again a nice deep feeling, so it wasn't kind of in the back of my nose and throat area, it was much deeper. Um, we can try a so my lips are together now and it's more of a, mm, a humming kind of noise, okay? So it's just worth trying different ones out. So we're going to come the other way. So we're going to take the arms out in front and I'm going to come the opposite direction. So I'm leaning forward and for me it's anticlockwise. So I'm inhaling and exhaling. Inhale, I might bring a little noise into this exhale. in front of you, you can lean onto a chair if that's more comfortable, just softening down and releasing. And slowly coming up. So by listening to the sound as well, when we're um, that noise with our out breath, it helps you to focus on the length of the out breath. So we've talked before about finding um, the thing that helps you connect with the breath and how that can be different for everybody. So uh, for some people, you know, it's just sitting quietly and breathing, just listening to the breath is all they need to do. For other people, it can be linking that breath with the movements. Okay, so we've done our inhales and exhales, haven't we? Or we've done our cat position, our rolling out um, of the back to, to connect with that breath. So some, some people are doers, if you like, and it, it helps to, to link it with doing something. Um, maybe it's that audio, maybe it's hearing the breath that can help you. So when you inhale, Obviously, there's no noise going on, but that exhale. Can really help you to lengthen the out breath um, by literally just giving yourself time to finish all the way to the end. And the point of that, in case you've missed that at any point, <laughs> is that the more we exhale, the more we can then inhale. So the more we empty the lungs, then we've got that space within our body to fill with lots of fresh oxygen as we inhale. Oxygen that's going to our baby, going into our bloodstream, to our baby, to our brains, to our muscles. And it's going to just help in every way when we're in labour, it's helping to, to keep a lid on that anxiety, to keep us nice and calm, and it's feeding our muscles 
with all the oxygen they need um, so that we don't get so tired to keep us going. So, maybe using a chair or your birth ball to, to lean over now, pretty nice and comfy. So if you need a block, if you're choosing to sit back on the heels, it's quite nice to have a cushion or something between the feet and the bottom to lean over. Okay. If you prefer to be standing, <coughs> and this is, you know, it's good to practice in different positions so that, you know, when we're uh, not together later, when you're on your own, you can maybe have a go over your ball, maybe resting on your partner's lap um, against the wall, as I'm showing you now. So <coughs> you can make a little pillow, taking the forearms onto the wall, just stepping away so that you're leaning in, okay? So you can see like this, I've got potentially that birth, that um, baby weight away from my spine, and I'm really using gravity because I'm standing. And then have a nice roll out of the hips as well as I focus on that breath. So, <coughs> do excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to lean over the chair, so I'm a little bit closer so that you can hear me. Um, and I'm just going to walk the feet back. So again, lovely position for taking that weight away from the spine and just having a little rock. So I'm nice and soft in the knees, stretching out the toes, giving my baby a lovely little rock there. So we're going to focus once again on that breath. So we're going to try a mmm and we're going to try an ah oh, um, and, and a ooh. So three noises there. Don't worry too much, you know, if you just find one that you particularly like, sticking to that. Um, I just want to spend a few moments doing this so you can really begin to feel the benefits of using the sound, using the breath to come into your own little zone, okay? If you think about monks chanting, you know, that feeling of extending the breath, of really forgetting about everything else that's going on and just coming into yourself, okay? So take a nice, big, deep breath in. And as you exhale, mm, that going I'll, I'll come back to, to mine in a sec but just to say when we do this in class it's really lovely because everyone's breaths are different lengths and there comes a point where the room is just full of that reverberating sound and there's no end and no beginning you know no one's sort of breathing in or breathing out um, in time with the other person so do just continue with the length of your breath don't worry if it's not matching mine and just focus on that sound.
cigarette. It's noticing how you're feeling. Taking your time. And then you're already very slowly either walking into the wall or to a chair or slowly just coming up to sit. Bringing yourself back. to the room. So there's certainly, well, certainly an amount of headiness that goes on with that deep breathing. And that's simply because you are giving your body so much more oxygen than you would normally do um, with our sort of short, just get through it everyday breaths. Um, and it's quite, it can be quite hard work um, for the diaphragm and all the muscles around the chest. You're not used to taking longer, deeper breaths. When we start to do that, um, it can feel a little bit of a workout. So that's why it's really good to be practicing now, you know, while you're pregnant. Um, so this isn't all completely, you know, new shock to the body um, when you go into labour. So by maybe spending a little bit of time every day, um, even if it's just those you know, 10 minutes before you go to sleep, you know, you can do this um, just sitting comfortably or lying comfortably before you go to sleep. Uh, it's a lovely way to, to calm down um, and relax. So um, yeah, little and often, it, it's really good. Um, and then it just be feeling more natural. And you don't have to make the noise, you know, the noise can help, as I said, uh, with connecting with that breath and extending it. Um, but you can, you know, you can breathe relatively quietly if, if that's more suitable for you as well. All right. So I hope you enjoyed looking at that noise making today. Um, as I said, I mean, it is something that in a class full of ladies, it's so beautiful to just get that that wave of, of tuneful humming and ahhing um, through the room. Um, so I've missed you today. I've missed doing it on my own. Okay, coming down for um, a couple of stretches then before we come down to relax. So not so much yoga this week, but don't forget if you want a little bit more of a stretch, you can always go back to one of our previous classes. So we're sitting on the edge of our block once again, just tucking away behind so we can sit nice and tall. And we're just going to bring one leg up towards us, it doesn't matter which one. I'm just taking the sole of the foot onto the floor and a little bit wider possibly for you so that you've got room for your belly there, okay? So it doesn't matter if the foot's right down here, if that's what you need to be comfortable, it's absolutely okay. Now what we're not going to do is twist towards that leg. Closed twists are what we seriously avoid when we're pregnant. So we're keeping it nice and open by turning away. But you can use your arm on the inside edge of that leg as a little bit of leverage as we come into our twist. So the same arm as the straight leg is coming behind us, possibly onto the edge of your block so you can get that extra bit of lift. Opposite elbow against the inside of the knee. Inhale, exhale to turn. So if you're comfortable in the neck, you can turn the head to look all the way over the back shoulder. Just a couple of breaths there. And then we're coming back to center. So notice how different that breath is now, much shorter breath because it's, um, it's a little bit hard to breathe when we come into a twist. So bringing the opposite foot up again, maybe out to the side, whatever fits well with your bump. Just making sure that you're sitting tall. Think about that extended leg, pushing into the heel. And then the arms coming in against that knee. We're using that 
to just push against a little bit as we come round into our tip twist. So we're sitting really tall, exhaling to turn, looking over the back shoulder. And remembering that twists are really good for digestion. So we're wringing out our digestive passages, good for constipation. And inhale back to centre. So we're going to repeat that once more each side. So twists are much better to be repeated because of that restriction of breath than held too long. So again, using that squeeze against the leg. So push the leg into the arm so the leg's not being forced out to the side. Inhaling and exhaling as you turn. Looking over the back shoulder. And back to centre. Last time on this side. Just coming up, sitting tall. And coming round behind. Same arm as bent leg. So you're coming away in your twist from that bent leg. Push into the heel of the straight leg if you want a little extra stretch. And inhale back to centre. And then just getting ready for relaxation. So you can relax maybe over your birth ball. So you can come forward over your ball, you can have the legs wide, just relaxing everything forward away from the spine. Or if you want to come to lying down, we're just lying on our left side. You can take a cushion underneath the head. Let me grab my I might have a cushion here because these are these are good this shape cushion for kind of putting under the belly or between the legs so if you're on your side and you want to make it a little comfier into the hips it's nice between the legs there or if you're feeling like your belly's not comfortable on the floor and you need a little bit of support underneath you can have another cushion there possibly the one under the head, whatever makes you comfortable. Just coming down to relax now. So left side encourages baby into the right position for birth, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Maybe we'll do that next week, baby positioning. While you get settled down, I'll just sit up. Or you could sit up as well if that's more comfy for you. So however you're sitting, we just want to reconnect once more with the breath to quieten the mind. So just noticing if there are any areas of tension, just sending your out breath to soften and relax them. Soften the pelvic floor, the buttocks, soften the sides of your body around your baby. The whole abdominal area is lovely and soft. And your baby's just snuggling in with you there. And maybe noticing whether they're awake or asleep. Sending them down a little kiss, a little cuddle. And 
and then knowing they're safe and loved and cosy. Bringing your mind back to yourself. Noticing how you're feeling. Noticing that breath. Just gently gliding in and out of your body. Soften the features of the face. Relax the temples. Notice that little space coming maybe between the teeth as we let go of the tension in the jaw. And soften down the sides of the neck and out across the shoulders. the bridge which connects life to consciousness, which unites your body to your thoughts. Whenever your mind becomes scattered, use your breath as the means to take hold of your mind again. slowly just beginning to deepen your breath once more. Notice that inhale travelling all the way down to your baby. And that exhale just taking away any fears and worries. gentle movement into the fingers and the toes. Maybe swallowing into the throat. Maybe stretching the jaw with a yawn. And then when you're ready, there's no rush, just lovely and slowly Bending arms and legs, doing whatever feels good for you. And slowly, nice and slowly coming up to sitting. So just making sure you're sitting comfortably. You can feel your sitting bones just rooting down into the floor and beginning to lengthen up through the spine, relaxing those shoulders back and down. The 
breath lifting and opening the chest, lifting and opening your heart. And if you have the eyes closed, just slowly opening them, just being aware of where you are, how you're feeling. And then we're going to take the hands either side. And as we inhale, we're stretching all the way up and exhaling to the heart. Namaste.